Right, hello, hello. Uh, back to some more spot get. Um, where we got up to? When was it? On Wednesday. Let's uh, get our server running. We were playing around with. Um, oh, I don't even have have it open here. Let's give it a second. A ghost. Oh, not that one. This one. So, uh, we we're trying to trying to get our um, nav bar sorted with the the hexagon shapes. Obviously, we're only looking at mobile for the time being. So, let's jump that over to a mobile view. And we were stacking it up so that this would appear in the corner. But um, we're going to play around a little bit more with that in a little bit. Um, I think the aim today is to get a better understanding of CSS Grid. Um, because looking at uh, the way that this should work, I think this is going to be a better way overall for how to do this uh, nav bar. So we can have a grid that has uh, one column. And then in our fourth row of the grid, or fifth row of the grid, if we're including the close button here, we can have both the contact and the hexagon, and we should be able to align the elements better that way around. But uh, that's what we're going to get onto. Um, mostly we're just playing around with the this uh, nav bar last time, and a bit of SVG magic around creating. Uh, this hexagon so a little polygon here and we started looking at um, CSS variables so that we can use a global primary color for our brand um, but yeah so that was the initial well that's a little recap uh, but to start with again we're gonna run through some of our uh, word or clones um, play it play a few games of that and see how we get on uh, so, let's start with, I was going to say weekend, but it's not a great, there's a lot of E's there, <laughs> not, not a great first letter. Um, let's start with, why not hexagon? Okay, so we've got an E and an O somewhere, oh, right, in that order, so there's no N. Uh, what do we want to go for? Uh, it's not A. It's always the letters that you uh, <laughs> get rid of that like pop up in your head. I'm thinking like um, Savior or something like that, but A's out of the question. Erode, erosion, no, there's no N. Let's go with erode. Hmm, I'd rather have some more letters in there. Um, although we would check if E's first. Service doesn't have an O. Uh, detour would be good. Detour. Okay. Doesn't end in an R. The D is not at the start. Uh, RE maybe? Re... There's no T, not redirect. Re... Redeploy? That eliminates quite a few words, a few letters. Um, so it starts with RE. D is not next. Uh, 
reorder. That would be no, it can't end in an R. So that would be cruel. <laughs> uh, we could have void ending in oid. Re revoid, revoid. Mm, not sure I'm seeing anything there. Record. Record could work. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> or record or record. Uh, record or record. One of the two. Nice. Keeping up our uh, streaks. Have we... Uh... Yeah. This should have brought down the average on both the, the words and letters used. So that's good. <laughs> right. Uh, movie doll. I saw about this yesterday. I might have done this one though. Uh, because when I saw it, it might have been past midnight. I don't know what time it resets. Um, but I was playing on my phone. So let's just have a quick look. If it's the one that I've already seen, then we'll skip to the next one. And I won't spoil it for people. No, I think that was a new one. Uh, <laughs> oh, God. What was that? So basically with this, you get like a second recap of the movie and every time you get you like guess you can have an, an extra second long uh an extra second on the duration of the like recap but basically you're getting the full movie in like frames i saw a little kid in it <laughs> so six cents <laughs> let's guess that i don't think that was it but so you get a longer version with hopefully some more more frames to help us guess here. Mm, I've got no idea with that. There's a lot of like out in the desert. Maybe it's like a, um, a Transformers. Hmm, I don't think it was the first one. Let's try this. Okay, we've got three seconds this time. It flicks through so quickly though. Ooh. I thought I saw... Uh, Wonder Woman there. Oh, what's, what's 1984? Is that the 1984 version? Nope. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> I think we're struggling on this one. <laughs> it just flicks through so quickly and you can't rewatch it again. If you could rewatch it, that'd be good. Right. Hmm. I I'm sure it's a superhero movie because I, I I'm sure there were flicks there of like someone wearing like a quite a funky helmet it could be like part of a superhero costume so I've got no idea I don't think I've seen this film <laughs> um, nothing's jumping out at me I think I'm gonna have to skip just get another second That's definitely uh, Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. No, is it um, is it a Batman? No, is it a Justice League? Maybe. Let's try this. It's definitely some kind of. Unless it is that other Wonder Woman film. Let's try it. 
Okay. Don't feel too bad about that. <laughs> we did we did guess it around about the third guess. Can you guess the movie from just one frame? Or is this a different one? Uh, <laughs> what? Submit to skip. Let's get another frame. No, I'm not going to do this one. <laughs> We've got enough. We've got enough games to play. Right. Uh, Sydney to Nerdle. So this one is um, it's a reminder of how to play. There are four or five movies to find in each puzzle. So, for example, in this puzzle, you could line up Nolan Batman, Best Supporting Actor and Christian Bale to make uh, The Dark Knight. So that's the original. So there are five different sets of four. So obviously there's some, uh, there's like four main clues and then one cross clue that shares all of its clues with the other sets. So phone home far, far away has got to be ET, hasn't it? Fiona Donkey. It looks like we've got Shrek here. Drew Barrymore, maybe. Or was it Cam? It was Crane Gertie. Lucy Liu, Drew Barrymore, and Karen Diaz. We've got Charlie's Angels. Okay, let's let's start with that. Um, battle. Uh, Fiona. Fiona Donkey. I guess far, far away, right? Yeah, okay. And what was the last one we had? I'm sure we picked one already, but I can't see it now. Oh, Cameron Diaz. Hey, Yanks, how's it going? Okay, so we've got a cross glue here. Thank you for that. <laughs> Let's uh, bring them in line. Okay, well, who is in E.T.? Oh no, far, far away. Okay, so Shrek is the cross clue, I think. Um, maybe. Oh, Drew Barrymore was E.T. as well. Oh, wait. It's good knowledge there. Uh, how do we get... Maybe not far, far away then. Phone home has to be E.T., right? Maybe Charn Actress. Okay, right. So we've got one more to add on to it. Nice. Which... Was there CG in E.T.? Or was it all, like, practical effects? I feel like E.T. was a puppet, wasn't it? So... It's not going to be... Yeah. <laughs> okay, what else? What can we have with Lucy Lou? Maybe Viper for um, Kill Bill. And Crane. Wait, what, what would be this one? Angel. Battle Angel. Oh, is that um that video game movie that was really weird? What was it called? Oh yeah, of course. Uh Elita, isn't it? That's not the one that I was thinking of. <laughs> um Yeah. There we go. Oh, Kung Fu Panda. Yeah, Alita. 
Nice. No, I was thinking of, uh, what's it called? I think, I think Sucker Punch. Which was some like uh, video game-esque. Uh, it was a weird movie. <laughs> so yeah, Shrek. Nice. Kung Fu Panda. Didn't realise Lucy Liu was in it. Alita, Charlie's Angels, E.T. Nice. Right, a couple more games. We've got the reversal to do here. Which is a similar kind of idea, but uh, the opposite way around. We've got a list of movies here, and we've got to find five themes across the movies. And they can be as simple as, like, numbers in the title. Because uh, we've got a million thousand thirty here. Is there, a, is there a fourth one? Doesn't look like it. So it might not be that. Uh, didn't Big and 13 going on 30? Are they to do with, like, swapping... Swapping consciousness. Is there another one? Hmm. What other ones? It would help knowing some of these. Oh, what the uh the 2019 hit. I think probably not in this case. It's possible, but uh, I'm going to guess not. I think that, that would be a bit of a stretch to on the clues. Well, okay. So we've got the fighter and snatch are both they have boxing in it. Sherlock Holmes also has a boxing scene in it. So let's line those up. Nope. <laughs> I feel like Real Steel is about boxing as well. Yeah, okay. So it's not the Sherlock Holmes. Oh, uh, Million Dollar Baby is as well. Of course, yeah. I was thinking there is that little uh, like fighting scene at the start, but yeah, you're right with that one. Oh, that's good. And we've got Sherlock Holmes Judge Due Date. This being another three. Hmm. Fighter, million dollar. God, these are tough. I feel like we've got like talking. Not necessarily talking animals, but talking uh, non-humanoids. Because <laughs> I think 3,000 Years of Longing is the one with the... Uh, like, it's like a Norwegian film with a troll or something like that. Or it's something to do with, like, a troll. Uh, Doolittle, obviously, talking animals. Aladdin. I mean, Iago talks. Uh, But what would be the fourth to that list? Rain of Fire? Do the dragons talk? I don't think they do. Hmm. Trying to see any other connections that might be here. We might have to just start guessing some. <laughs> Actually, it can't be Rain of Fire because they're already in the, the row, so there would be yellow to say that we're almost there. So let's swap Aladdin into this row and see. Okay. It's not that, but we've got another triple here. That's it, the, the genie. Oh, so yeah, genie, genie. So Rain of Fire, Gentleman Interstellar. That could have something like a similar actor. 
same actor in all of them, but I, I don't know what that's going to be. What's got wishes? Maybe big? Rain of Fire is, um, it's like set in the future and it's, well, well, I don't know if it is the future, but it's basically a world where dragons exist. Big is wish. Okay, so that's got to be with 3,000 years of longing and Aladdin. And do any of the others have a wish? Right, we've got to remember Sherlock Holmes, Judge and Due Date all have a, a theme shared. We're going to break that. Actually, well, we can do this. That won't break it. I don't think we're going to find a cross clue, though. Which one's the cross clue? I mean, 13 going on 30, that's got to be something to do with the wish as well, right? So let's do that. Yeah. Okay, and now... Swap these. Okay, so we've got Danny Jr. and McConaughey. So there's got to be a cross clue somewhere here that works. Which is going to be difficult because I haven't seen a lot of these movies. <laughs> um... It's normally the case here where I can't get the last one. It's probably to do with like who's the director shared between some of the films or something like that. So I think we would probably say 3000 years of longing is out. Uh, who is the, I haven't seen the 2019 version. That is the, the Will Smith one, right? I haven't actually seen that. So. <laughs> I mean, we'll try that, but we'd need, we'd need a similar on these ones as well, which might be Reign of Fire. That's got a lot of English actors, I think, or The Gentleman. So if we move Snatch here. And out of these, maybe the gentleman. Oh, yeah, we got something. And either the judge or Sherlock Holmes. Let's try Sherlock. Ah, director. <laughs> Guy Ritchie films. Nice. I wasn't expected to get that one. <laughs> I told you it's director. I'm never going to get those ones. <laughs> right, one left. We're doing some game duel. So classic is they give you the box art for a game and you have to guess what it is. Um, so mostly pixelated, but we've got a little bit of a view on the side here. Which isn't like jolting any memories. I might want to put like Wind Waker, but I feel like that's not the same graphics but we're obviously looking at something sea based so let, let's go with that for the moment and see oh no not the HD one so we get some clues so we're looking for an adventure game it's not going to be a Nintendo game it's not going to be a Zelda game What's this art style? Hmm. Not sure about this. A monkey island. Yeah, we can go for that. Uh, it's it's not going to be the original ones, though, is it? It's going to be one of these more recent ones. What do you want to go for? Return, curse, or secret? I think the older... The older box art would be a bit more... Uh, pixelated. 
I'm going to go for Curse. I don't know it, but... Okay, so it's not a Monkey Island, but it is something that was on PC. See, this art style makes me think of, like, uh, Genshin. But I know it's not that. But it might get the same developer or something like that. Let's see if it's on mobile as well. Okay, so it's something that is on mobile and PlayStation. Again, <laughs> not getting a lot in terms of uh, clues on this. Is there any boats or anything like that? No, it's just sea and like clouds. But it is a mobile game as well. iOS and Android. Hmm. And PS4 as well. That's the weird one. What games like this could be on the PS4 as well? <laughs> I think we need more, uh, more revealed. Can I think of any... Kind of looks like there's a face in the clouds at the top there. I'm not sure that's a coincidence. Are there any, like, movie tie-ins it could be? Mm, no idea with this. Um, what can we guess? This is a tricky bit, even thinking of games that are on the, these consoles. PS4 era. Unlikely to be Nintendo. I want to put Star in, in the title, but I don't know what. No, I don't think any of these work. Uh, let's go with... Uh, is Dredge in there? No. Any other, like, sea-based games? It's not going to be Sea of Thieves, is it? I don't think that's on mobile. And it wouldn't show these kind of graphics. Uh, maybe Black Flag? I wouldn't have thought they would use, like, animated cover. But that, I think, is PlayStation. It's on Google Stadia and Xbox One. And it's a platform game. Ooh, what? A boat with, like, houses on it. Okay, I've got no idea about this game. And there's definitely, like, faces and animals in the clouds here. We've got, like, a frog kind of thing there. We've got like a tiger at the top there. Some deer, like a turtle. There's another... Something flying out the front. I've got no idea with this. It's got to be some like anime tie-in, I reckon. Um... Like a city... Like houses or stuff on a boat. Nah, I've not got this one. I'm gonna skip. <laughs> we get a little bit more. Did I? Oh, you gotta hold it down. Okay. I mean, it'll, it'll be good if we can see the whole name, but <laughs> I'm assuming that's the name of it. Can I search for rare? <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna guess it's Spirit Farer. <laughs> Farer. <laughs> That's such a cheap way to do it. <laughs> I've never heard of this game before. A 10 out of 10 on Steam. Wow. Might have to check it out. I don't feel bad for not knowing that, but. <laughs> Very lucky that the uh, the title's in the in the artwork. Right, uh, artwork next. 
and then this keywords and then the guess and then we'll, we'll get onto some uh, development okay so we've got like a samurai it's old graphics Is this like an old Tekken, maybe? Tekken... Let's go with three. Okay, it is a Tekken. <laughs> uh, maybe we're a Tekken two. That was lucky. Uh, it was something on PlayStation. Yeah, so it's got to be older than Tekken three then. Tekken two. I don't think it's... This isn't the... This could be the original, actually. Especially for the artwork. Let's go with Tekken 1. And if not, then we... I think we guessed Tekken 2. <laughs> okay. It's got to be, right? Yeah. God, I remember playing that. <laughs> okay, two left. Let's go on to the keywords. So this one, we've got a list of keywords about a game. And similar, if we, when we guess a game, we get to know things that match, but we also get um, extra clues. So Ape Human Agents Heroes Lond London. Ape London? With heroes? What? I'm trying to think of any games with apes in. Let's see. <laughs> Is there any clues with ape? Nope. Uh, monkey? No, not a monkey island. Um, I was thinking maybe like a Planet of the Apes thing, but doesn't look like it. Ape Human Agents. Heroes London. Not sure I've got any clues to this. which case we just guessed something random um what could we have that has agents or ape ape is the bit that's confusing me like a zoo zoo based game zoo tycoon <laughs> i mean it's not gonna be that but so something on xbox one and pc robots online grapple soldier assassin Robot and apes. London. London's the bit that's confusing me here. I think it's... Uh... Where's the grapple hook? It's got to be something quite recent, I think. What's the, what's the console? Xbox One. So a Microsoft based game maybe. Mm. Any ideas? I'm happy to take any suggestions. An Assassin's Creed, yeah sure. Uh, what would be... God, there's a lot of Assassin's Creed. <laughs> uh, what's going to be based in London? I don't think any of the earlier ones were there. Where were they? Black Flags in the Caribbean. The first couple were like... Oh, uh, that's a good point, actually. Where's the... Like, modern... Syndicate. Yeah, let's give that a go. Okay, it's not a 
It's not an Assassin's Creed. Syndicate agents. Superhero, cyberpunk. A battle.net game. I don't think it'll be it won't be cyberpunk, will it? I don't I don't think it will be that. Because I don't think they'll put the the game name in the title. This to me seems like a um what was what are they called like prototype? It was prototype or there was another one that's exactly the same. It was prototype, but let's let's go for Bnet is Warcraft or Starcraft. Have they got <laughs> have they got one that's based in London? <laughs> I'm gonna guess prototype because I feel like Teleportation, loot boxes, Warhammer, martial arts. Hmm. Cybernetics. Could it be like a crisis? I don't know if any of these were. Oh, Warhammer. I mean, it'll be a bit on the nose if it was a Warhammer game and they've got a war. Warhammer like this. And Warhammer's set. What? Which turn based thing? Futuristic. Oh, like XCOM. That's a good idea. Uh, no idea. No idea what any of the games were. But um, let's go with Enemy Within. We'll, we'll at least know if we're. Uh... Okay, it's a strategy game. It's got RPG elements, active abilities, escort missions. Um. Hmm. <laughs> I, I'm not sure we're going to get this one. We've got two guesses left still. Strategy game. On PS4, Xbox One, so it's still fairly recent. Teleportation is the weird one. Like Overwatch isn't based in London at all, is it? I feel like we've got a lot of this kind of stuff in Overwatch. Let's let's give that a go. Uh, Overwatch 1. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I'm not sure the link to London. Was it really based in London? Yeah. Mm, it's, it's kind of a strategy game. I mean, it's, it's mainly a first-person shooter. Like, it, it would show us... It was a shooter strategy. Sci-fi comedy. First-person, multiplayer, Blizzard. Yeah, where where's London? Oh, okay. Apparently London's... Uh... <laughs> Apparently it's based in London, some of it at least. I've never played it, so <laughs> again, don't feel too bad with that. Right, one one bit left, and then we'll get onto the coding. So we're gonna do the guess. And we can start with Overwatch because uh it doesn't really matter what we start with here. But so similar similar kind of thing here. Um we make a guess, and then we get given all these different categories. And so there, there is a, a game that we're, we're trying to guess. It's going to be first person because this is green. Um, if it was like first or third person, then this would be yellow. So where it's yellow here, we know it's multiplayer and probably single player or co-op or split screen. It's not anything made by Blizzard or Square Enix. 
it could be a shooter or a strategy and it could be science fiction or comedy or both of them and more and it's older than 2016 so what do we want to do a shooter let's go for a shooter only that's older than 2016 that's first person let's go for like a halo let's go halo 3 let's try that oh even older oh quake quake would be a good one actually we might be pc shooter sci-fi is looking good as well and it's a very old game so quake one of the quakes is uh definitely up for it maybe quake should we go quake 2 because that gives an option for it to be uh to tell us if it's even older okay so it's not as old as quake 2 Pretty sure sci-fi is definitely on the cards. It's probably just a PC game here. Single multiplayer co-op, potentially. But it's not the Quake Saga, so it's... Uh, um, what else could we be looking at? A shooter from like early 2000s. It's annoying that we can't like narrow down what consoles it's on as well. Um, what are we going to go for? Can we think of a PC only shooter, first person, early 2000s? I mean, we can look at like a Call of Duty, right? It's not really modern warfare would give us a good idea although 2007 let's try this oh that was 2007 as well <laughs> no new information well we know it's not a call of duty And it's not warfare. Hmm. <laughs> we'll get a clue in a minute. We get some. We've still got seven. Uh, we've still got six lives. So what? What console era are we looking at? We're looking at PS2 or GameCube, maybe. But first person. Can I think of any first person shooters on the GameCube? Not really. <laughs> um, maybe like a Metroid? Was it Metroid Prime that was uh, GameCube? I'm not sure. I think they were side view ones, weren't they? Oh, and also on a lot of them they're first and third person because when you when you curl up into a ball you get a secondary view hmm um what other first person shooters can i think of <laughs> it's always when you're starting to guess this kind of stuff and mine goes blank actually uh killing floor i play a lot of that's a first person shooter. And I think that's between these years. Actually, it might be later than 2007. Let's guess it anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, that was later. But it's on Unreal. It's an Unreal game. Okay, we're going to take our clue as well here. So it costs us a life, but we'll get one of these other ones. 
Okay, so it's a game by these people. <laughs> I don't recognize any of those names. <laughs> a game like Quake. A bit newer. What the... Might be some of these. Like a time splitters or something like that. Or... Ultima in the title. Mm, doesn't have anything in this list. It's, it doesn't. It doesn't have every game in existence. Un Unreal in. Oh, uh, yeah, Unreal Tournament, right? Uh, well. 2004 at least gives us a benchmark, even if it's wrong. We'll know if it's pre-2004 or post-2004. We'll narrow down the, the, the years at least. Yeah, it's not an Unreal, but uh, earlier than 2004. And it's only single player and multiplayer. There's no co-op and there's no split screen. I don't recognize any of these developers. Edios Interactive. We're looking at something really old, though. In terms of, like, video games. Yeah, it's, it, that does fit a lot of these clues, doesn't it? It's got to be sci-fi. Well, sci-fi is definitely correct. Because we know it's not action from this clue here. And we know sci-fi could be correct. So a sci-fi, single player or multiplayer, first person on Unreal from 2000-ish. Have we guessed Crisis? I think I'd recognize the publisher if it was Crisis though. Hmm. And it's not just a shooter as well. We should try something with different genres so that we can uh, narrow things down. But I can't think of uh, anything else it could be. Maybe a Doom. But again, you'd imagine you'd uh, you'd recognise the publishers. Doom was around the same time as Quake, right? So we're probably looking at Doom Two rather than Doom One. Oh, older, but it's not Doom as well. Oh, I think we might not get this one. Oh, Bethesda. Yeah, probably would have got... I mean, it's not any of the Valve games. It can't be any, like, Half-Life or uh, Portal. Single player and multiplayer, first person shooter from around 2000. When was, um, Left 4 Dead is more recent, even the, the first one, I think. Sci-fi shooter. Oh, but this is so tough. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go for Left Dead. See, that's rough. I think this is way too late. I think this is... I think this is probably like 2011 or something. Oh, and it's also, it's also Valve. I've just literally said it's not a Valve one. <laughs> Um, what else can we go for? Mm, this is our last guess as well. I just don't recognize any of these uh, developers or publishers. Let's 
I, th I feel like if we look up Ironstorm, that'll be too... Because this is the last guess. Go on. Let's, let's see Ironstorm. I don't recognize that logo. Oh, if it's Deus Ex, I've got no chance. It's got to be Deus Ex, right? Yeah. Well, we weren't going to guess that. <laughs> uh, there's... Yeah. I didn't realise that was an, a multiplayer game. So role-playing, shooter, stealth... PS2 and PS3. Never mind. We missed. There's only one missed. We missed today. Got all the other, got all the other weddles, so that's fine. Did we get the? Yeah, we did get the movie one as well. Nice. Okay. Well, nice little warm up for Friday. Um. On to. Some more salt kit and styling and CSS and all that lovely web dev stuff. Um, so, having a little look around um, earlier today, I was just looking for some tutorials and stuff to, to have a look at, like the placement of items. Um, and basically, I think the best way to do this nav bar and have things overlapping and like this nice little view that we've got here, rather than positioning them absolutely, which is what we're doing at the moment, is to have a look at the CSS grid uh, setup. Um, so basically what we want to do is set our nav uh, menu, like our hamburger menu here, set it up as a grid with one column with five entries that uh, switches into a one by one when it's closed and I think that way we can put both the hexagon and the uh, the lines all in the same uh, square of the grid and that way we can align them up properly on top of each other so um, to do that I kind of want to have a proper look into CSS grid because I haven't really used it before I tend to just use Flexbots for everything. And then also found that there's this game called CSS Grid Garden, which is a little game to help you understand a little bit more. I think it's by the same people that did Flexbox Froggy. Uh, which actually, we can do a little run through as well because uh, it's good practice. So these are a couple of games just to help you out with um, learning uh, the grid and Flexbox stuff. Um, so we're going to start with Flexbox Froggy. I'll put the link in chat. And yeah, we'll, we'll run through this and see. Yeah, I do want to do animation. Um, and like transitions once we have got the basic stuff set up um, but because that's all like kind of built into SvelteKit uh, I'll kind of want to get the main structure done first and then once we've got that there'll be a little animation to swap in between which should be quite nice but yeah I, I do want to because because Svelte Svelte and Svelte it makes uh, transitions so easy to do. Uh, it, it seems kind of uh, silly not to include them. So let's uh, give Flexbox Froggy a try. Just to brush up a bit on our, our flex uh, skills. So welcome to Flexbox Froggy, a game where you help Froggy and friends by writing CSS code. So you have to guide the frog onto the lily pads. 
Uh, and in this level, we're just using justify content. So we have a display flex. Um, so by default, it's a row. And if we do uh, justify content, flex end, it will push our froggy friend across to the right. And uh, he's all good. So justify content, uh, use justify content again help these frogs get to their lily pads. Remember that this CSS property aligns items horizontally and accepts the following values. I don't think it's, it's strictly horizontally, so if we look at the guide to Flexbox, I'm fairly certain Justify Content is uh, specifically on the cross axis. No, sorry, on the main axis. And align items is the cross axis, right? So one thing that helps visualize on Flexbox is this kind of setup. So by default, uh, because Flexbox has a default of uh, direction of row, um, your main axis is along the row. But if you have a column, it will be along the column. And your cross axis is the one that's perpendicular to your, your main axis. So yeah, the justify content is along the main axis. So here, yeah, because our flex direction, actually, can we do flex direction here? Is it gonna let us? Uh, oh, bottom. Oh, it is, okay. So yeah, if we did, Oh, we can, we've only got one line to play with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was, just, I was just playing around. So in this case, it's going to be center. And that puts them in place. But yeah, I was just, just trying to highlight that uh, justify content doesn't specifically mean horizontally. So help all three of... Uh, the frogs find their lily pads by using justify content. Content. So this is going to be... Now, before we even try them out, um, we've got three options here it could be. It's going to be either space around, space between, or uh, the other space one, which is called space evenly. Um, and the way that they work is space between would distribute all of the space along the, the row in between the items. So it can't be that. Uh, space between, actually we can type this out because we know it's not this. So space between would put all of the frogs right out to the edge and distribute space in the middle. Um, space around uh, allocates space. Now which way around does it do? Space evenly and space around. One of them allocates all the space and splits it between each item. And one of them allocates the space and creates the same padding in between each. Actually, did it tell us this? Oh, it hasn't even got space evenly in here. But there is a space evenly. Which won't be right here. So this space evenly makes sure that this gap, the first gap, is also the same as the second and the, like any other gaps in the row. Whereas space around, which is what this one is, uh, puts the same amount of padding on each item. So for the first item, there'll be a smaller gap, which will be half the padding uh, to the first item. And then in between items, it will be double the space. So if you think of like all of the space uh, along this row, you can divide it up into uh, equal portions and you get one portion on, on the front and then one portion after your first item and one portion before your second item. So you get a double space 
and then a double space and a single space at the end. So that's the space around. Okay, so then this is space between. Uh, content. Space between. Next. I can just press enter, that's good. Okay, align items. So we've still got a horizontal array based flex. Um, and this time we're going to just align items flex end. So we're now aligning items, which is looking at the cross axis of our flex box, which at the moment is going top to bottom. If we go back to our diagram up here, we've got the row and this cross axis and the align items property is allowing us to place it along the cross axis. So center would be in the middle of the screen. Stretch, stretch would be interesting with this. Stretch, stretch. Does that actually stretch the froggies? Is it not? Are they within an item? Or I spelled that wrong? I haven't spelled it wrong. No. Don't know why it's not stretching down. Maybe they're fixed uh, sized images. There we go, the flex end. Okay, we've got to get into the middle. So we're going to do a justify content center and an align items center. Yep. Okay, frogs need to cross the pond again. I mean, I don't know if they're purposely giving a clue here, <laughs> but this time there's, there's some lily pads with plenty of space around them. <laughs> hint, hint. So justify content is along our flex direction, so along the row. So with that is where we want to do our space around. And then on our align items, which is along the uh, cross axis, we're going for flex end. Cool. Okay. Frogs need to get in the same order as their lady pads using flex direction. So in this case, we're doing row reverse. Direction. Row reverse. Oh, I didn't realize that automatically puts them to the other end of the flex box as well. But I suppose that makes sense, yeah. And this one is going to be flex direction. Actually, can we just do flex uh, column? Is it going to let us do that? Oh, it's flex flow, isn't it? We can do that as well. Um, help the frogs get to their own lily pads. Although they seem close, it will take both flex direction and justify content. Yeah, because flex direction, as we saw previously, will put them at the other end of the row. And so justify content. Or content. Content, if I can spell. Uh, and actually, we need the semicolon on here. Uh, this one will be um, flex end. So, by row reverse, we're swapping the axis to start at the far side um, and pointing backwards here. So, our end of our flex is now at this end. It's level 10. Right, um, so we're going to do flex direction of column, Oops. and we're going to do justify, oh wait, yeah, because our axis is now vertical, it's still justify content, uh, flex end. Thank you. 
so yeah if you think of justifying text it it describes how the text appears along the line of text in like a word document so that's a good way to remember it is it's along the same axis as the plex box Okay, um, what we got here, we've got to do uh, column reverse on our direction, next direction, column reverse, and we want to space between in our justify, justify content, space between. Nice. Okay, so we're going to do row reverse here. Direction. Row reverse. Because we're keeping them in a row, but we want to reverse the order. Um, our justify content. Again, how you want to justify the text, but we're centering it in this situation. And then our alignment. So align items, oh, if I can spell, is going to be flex end because it's at the end of the cross axis. Nice. Uh, sometimes reversing the row or column order of the container is not enough. In these cases, we can apply order property uh, to the individual items by default. Uh, items have a value of zero, but we can set the property to set positive or negative integer values. Okay. Use the order of property to render the frogs according to their lily pads. So with yellow, we want to order it to be later. So we're going to do like order two would be enough. Actually, order one is probably enough. Um, I've heard also order is not a good thing to use because it messes up with like tab orders and stuff like that. So if you can avoid it, probably best to. Okay, red. Red we want first, so we're going to do order minus one. Nice and easy. Um, right, and then we can apply individual uh, alignment to the align self. So for the yellow, we're going to do align self flex end. Nice, a few more levels left. Right, so with this one to put the yellow frogs later, we're going to go order one. And we're going to do a line self, which will apply to both of them. So, oh, so I can spell. Uh, flex end again. Nice and simple. Number 18, okay. Frogs are all squeezed into a single row. You can spread them out using flex wrap property. Uh, what do we want to do? We just want to wrap normally. So yeah, we can just do flex wrap. Uh, and then we're just going to do a normal wrap. Oh, it's automatically spreading down as well. It's just using up the whole uh, height of the element help this army of frogs form three orderly com uh orderly columns there's a combination of flex direction and flex wrap so because we want to keep them in the same order we're gonna to have to go column wrap uh so flex okay we'll do it how they want us to do it but you can do flex flow here Next direction is going to be column and uh, flex wrap as wrap. Nice. So the two properties of flex direction and flex wrap can be combined to flex flow. Yep, there we go. So same again, column. Column, uh, wrap. Nice and simple. 
Uh, frogs are spread all over the pond, but the lily pads are bunched to the top. You can use a line concept, uh, content to set how multiple lines are spaced apart from each other. Okay. So align content, and this is going to be flex start, I believe. Nice and easy. And then again, align content, flex end, put them all at the bottom. And then, okay, Frogs have had a party, but it's time to get home. Use a combination of flex direction and align content to get there to their lily pads. Right, okay, so our current order, obviously incorrect. What we want to do is set it to columns. But if we just do columns, we'll probably get, uh, we'll get red along the top. So we want column reverse with our flex direction. Column reverse. And then align content, we want center. Because we're trying to keep all of the frogs in the middle. Content center. God, typing ER. So <laughs> always gonna throw me off a little bit. Because in the UK we'd send it we'd, we'd spell it center. But I've got to get used to that, and I've got to get used to color being without a U. <laughs> okay, bring the frog home one last time using all the CSS properties you've learned. Right, so we want column and we want column reverse as the flex direction. And we want a wrap actually. So let's do flex flow uh, as column reverse wrap. No. Why, why not? We definitely want a wrap to occur. Why is it not column reverse wrap? Next direction. Reverse. Oh, it's because it's. Did I not hyphenate it? Flex wrap. Wrap. I would have thought that it would move the later bits off. Right, we definitely want to reverse here. And we definitely want a column. Let's let's do the other bits first. So we're gonna want an align align content content with space between. I'm sure we want column. What would we just do column wrap? And then can we do separate like this? No. See, that's the right break. But if we reverse it, it moves. Yeah, we definitely want reverse. Is it trying to say we want a row reverse?
Like, if we do this, that's definitely, yeah. We definitely want to align content space between. We want justify to be center. But now we just want to flip it. Which I would have thought is what we're doing with Colin Reverse, but that's not right. How do we swap them around? Is it just column? Do we not need to... no. I'm so confused why this isn't... <laughs> what have we done wrong? We're not ordering, we're not... So out of these... Align content we're using, flex flow we're using, which includes flex, flex direction. Align items is the only one that we can maybe say we still need to use. Align items. Oh, is it going to be flex end? Yeah, that's, that's what column reverse should be doing though, right? Let's start again. Flex flow, uh, flex wrap. Hmm. And maybe, maybe there's a, was there a wrap reverse as well? Ah, oh, there's a wrap reverse, right. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so actually we can do uh, flex flow, Column reverse, wrap reverse. We're almost there. There we go. Okay, and then justify. Um, we want to justify content, which is uh, how we want it to look along the column. So this is our one that we want centered, and then align content. Yeah, it's how we want it to align along the cross axis and we want this to have space between. Lovely. <laughs> that wrap reverse just threw me off a little bit. So why, why is it wrap reverse though? So when we do a normal wrap, we've sorted our items in order. Hi, Bloodmaster. How's it going? Welcome in. Um, okay, so let's, let's just get rid of the reverse for a minute and see if we had the normal column. Yes, those would be the two that get uh, taken off. So our normal column like this. Yeah, we're flexing some froggies. So if we allow it to wrap, it's clear that the bottom two are the ones that get to wrap over. You fill out the full row or the full column. Actually, even even better. Let's just get rid of this. Let's have it normal. So if we allow it to wrap, the last two items go out of the row. But why does row reverse still 
wrap out the other two, right? Because you'd imagine that it would fill up with the items in order and then wrap it. But basically what this is showing is when we're doing reverse, it's not actually reversing the order of them. It's still filling... Oh, okay. I want to wrap everything but the first two. Well, yeah, I think I think what's happening when because we're not actually reversing the items, we're reversing the direction that the items are displayed. So if we do, for example, our column reverse, we're not actually changing the order of these items in its div. So let, let's say this is in a, uh, a container. The red frog is still the first item that's drawn in as this flex is created. But because we told it column reverse, it just means we're drawing from the bottom up. So when we wrap it, it's still counting from the red frog up and the two yellow frogs get get wrapped. So that's why these that why the yellow frogs are the ones that get moved out of the column. Because we're actually still starting at this point and starting with the first item. It's just column reverse is saying stuff at the bottom of the column rather than at the top of the column. But we're still placing the items in the flex box in order from the first item, which is the red frog. Okay, so that's why wrap reverse is the correct way to do this. Nice. Okay, hopefully that's actually cleared up in my head how it works a bit more, actually. I didn't realize that was what we were doing. <laughs> so hopefully the grid one is a... Uh, Gonna help us with the same thing. Um, nice. And there's also other coding games. Right, so onto the grid one. So I have a far worse understanding of how grid works. Um, I haven't really had to use it in anything before. Oh little refresh for some reason. Don't know what caused that. Mm -hmm. Right. So we've got 28 levels of this one, but we're going to take this a little bit slower so we get a better understanding of how this all works. Welcome to Grid Garden, where you write CSS code to grow your carrot garden. Water only the areas that have carrots using the grid column starts property. For example, grid column start three will water the area starting at the third vertical grid line. Okay, so first is the the edge of the grid, second and third. So grid column start will tell us where which line to start at. So grid column start three there we go we get our water on the carrots there uh oh it looks like weeds are growing in the corner of the garden use grid column start to poison them okay so grid column start five in this case Oh, if anyone wants to uh, give this a go as well, where's our link? Uh, there's a link in chat. Right, on to the next one. When grid column start is used alone, the grid item by default will span exactly one column. 
However, you can extend the item across multiple columns by adding the grid column end property. Using the grid column end, water all your carrots while avoiding the dirt. <laughs> Picked up a glass of red wine from the kitchen and joined in. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, the, I, I love these kind of websites because actually visualizing what's happening is so difficult when you like read through documentation. I mean, CSS Tricks is normally pretty good with the way that they do it. Um, so for example, this one for the, the grid uh, is pretty good. Yeah, some visualizations here, but it's not the same as an interactive uh, experience. I think you get a lot more uh, more back from it. So starting at one, we want a grid column end oh, column end of four. It's a fourth line. Now is this this isn't is this stretching the container? Let's see what it's actually doing here with the water. I assume it's just applying this water on our overlay, right? So those are all the plot plants. The plots. Garden. That's so the soil underneath. Where's our water? It's uh control F. We're looking for an ID of water. Oh, it's done in a pre... No. Maybe just water? Or do they not name it this? No, they've hidden it somewhere else. Okay. <laughs> I was hoping we'd be able to see the actual... bits being used here. It doesn't look like it. This overlay plot. No. to like five can we see this effect over the top this one here we go there's our water right In there, but what's stretching it across? That's confusing. Wait, where's it's computed? Where are we setting the width? Hundred percent. Oh no, here. Right, here we go. So the water is given hundred percent of the width of this, and this is where our styling is coming in. So actually, we, can we overwrite that? Yeah. Hmm. 
So this. I wonder what's setting it to. Oh, because this is a 200 pixel image. Is that what's triggering it to? Oh, it is, it is literally just moving the image down <laughs> and scrolling it around. <laughs> so let's see, we, can we speed up the animation? Can we set this to like one second? We're really fast, fast flowing water. <laughs> what other options have we got for linear? Oh, these are, um, what are they called? Oh, I've forgotten the name of them now. They are our, our curves, our animation curves, aren't they? So like, could we set this to like bounce? No? Cubic? Any of these? No, it doesn't look like it. Where's linear? Animation timing function. Let's see what options we get. So we go for animation timing function. Oh, there is there is some. Oh, cubic bezier we'd have to do. We take it off of here. Oh, actually, it looks like there's a little helper as well. So we could have it. You can just play around with the animation curves. So we can have it going like backwards and forwards quite a lot. Or we could have it very fast, uh, like nothing and then really fast. I guess if we did something like this. Yeah, like really fast uh, intro animation, slow into a really fast end. But yeah, really, you'd probably want something very close to the the constant line. <laughs> it's fun to just play around with it, get a bit of an understanding of it. Cool, anyway, uh, set this correct, uh, let's go on. Oh, our carrots are growing a little bit there. Okay, uh, when pairing column start and grid column end, you might assume that the end value has to be greater than the start, but it turns out this is not the case. Try setting the column end value to less than five to water your carrots. So at the moment it's starting at five and going forward one because that's the default. But grid, oh, grid, column, end of two, we'll water our carrots, nice. Okay, uh, if you want to count grid lines from the right instead of the left, you can give negative values, ah, okay. Okay, so grid, column, end can be, uh, it won't be one uh, or minus one in this case, because that'll be the very end of the grid. But minus two, it should be. Oh, if I can type, we'll get our carrots because it's the second line on the column. So this, the, f the very first line will be minus one. Now try setting grid column starts to a negative value. So. I think we want the same. Uh, again, a minus two should. Okay, so it's still going across the right from the start. That okay, that can make sense. So we're at minus three in this position. So they're saying start our 
display from here. I was wondering if you give it a negative value, it reverses the axis direction, but it's still going from left to right. Uh, it's just telling us where the start line is. That makes sense in this situation. Right, instead of defining a grid item based on start and end positions of the grid lines, you can define it based on your desired column width using the span keyword. Keep in mind that span only works with positive values. Okay. Grid, column, end, span, two. So we're saying span to two sets of lines in the grid, so two columns across, from our start point. Cool. Tracing grid column end with span keyword towards your merits. So grid column and span uh, three, four, five. Nice. You can use uh, span keyword grid column start to set your item's width relative to the end position. Okay. So because we've got a fixed end position, we can say grid column start uh, span three in this situation. Say span three columns and end at six. Cool. Uh, typing both. Uh, grid column start and grid column end every time can be can get tiring. Fortunately, grid column, grid column, is shorthand for both, and accepted by a slash. Do I know any, any similar websites like this? Uh, yes, I don't know if they're all free ones, but um, YouTube, Kevin Powell, CSS. Right, this this guy's channel, which you might you might recognise him if you uh, look at any uh, CSS type videos. But very recently, he had a video that I got these links from. This video here. Oh, got the adverts turned off at least. Um, so there are a few more in this video uh, but yeah some some like this um, I think some of them you do have to pay for uh, we can have a look on grid attack so yeah this one has 80 coding levels about about CSS grid no worries uh, yeah they're quite quite good but I, I do think there are some paid bits of it. Yeah. It, it looks like you, you might have to pay for some of these. I mean, which is fair enough. Like, someone's taking the time to create these and uh, figure them out. Some ridiculous, <laughs> some ridiculous games you get. But yeah, this, uh, I think at least like CSS Battle and stuff like that are pretty good as well. Right, so, uh, so we separate the start and end value with a slash. So in this case, we want the column to start at one, two, three, four. Oh, four. And we want to end at six. Nice and easy. Uh, try using grid column to water these characters. The span keyword also works with the shorthand. Okay, so we're going to have to do grid column. We're going to start at uh, two. And then we want to span three. 
Okay, grid grid is making more and more sense in my mind now. <laughs> um, one of the things that sets grid apart from flexbox is you can easily position items in two dimensions, columns and rows. Grid grows at the start, where it's the same as grid column starts. So I'm assuming we can just do grid row uh, one, two, three. I'm not going to bother with start and end. No, that's just going to default to start. So let's let's power through some of these, I reckon. Grid row three slash six. Grid row and grid column at the same time. So grid oh, row. And um, we only really want the first one. So this is going to be five. Um. And grid column two. Easy. Oh wow. So grid oh, grid row is really all of them. So one to six. And then grid column grid column let's use span for this one so two span four nice uh, if typing out both grid column and grid row is too much for you there's yet another shorthand grid area accepts four values so row start column start row end column end Okay, so you're doing like, you're basically doing coordinates. X then Y of the start and X then Y of the end. I think it's easy to think of that like that. So grid area, in this case, we want X two, Y, no, sorry, X. No, wait, wait. Row is our Y coordinate. And column is our X. Okay, just remember it's row then column, row then column. That's going to be easier. So one, uh, two, uh, six, no, row, row, uh, four, six. That's cool. How about multiple items? You can overlap them without any trouble. Use grid area to define a second area that covers all of the unwatered carrots. Okay. So grid area. Right, so row two, column three, down to row five, column six. Okay, if grid items aren't explicitly placed with grid area, grid column, etc., they are automatically placed according to their order in the source code. We can override this using order. Okay, so we want to order the poison to last, so just set it to one. It's above zero. Again, I think messing around with the order of things is normally not uh, always a good idea. Uh, just in terms of like accessibility for your website, how to like tab around things and stuff like that. Nice. Okay. Now water and poison. Now the water and poison are alternating, even though all the weeds are at the start of the garden. Okay. So we just do order minus one. Oh. Set it all first. Cool. Up to this point, you've had your hand. You've had your garden set up with a grid of five columns, each with 20% of the full width. And five rows, each at 20% of the full height. This was done with the template uh, properties. But you can set up a grid however you want. Oh, okay. So because we only have one carrot in this bit, 
we're gonna set up a grid so that it's 50% okay so grid template columns uh 50 50 I mean we don't need the other 50 but cool So I wonder if the fact that the rows are rows of five. Is that what's setting the columns at five as default? Or is it just they've set it at five in the background? I think they've probably done that. I think by default, it'll just be a one column. Um, specify a bunch of columns with individual with identical width widths can get tedious. Lucky there's a repeat function to help with that. So grid column. No, template column. Uh, columns. Get it right. So repeat. Uh, and what do we want? We want the widths of 12 and a half percent. So eight. Eight. 12.5%. Nice. Nice and easy. Ooh. It's a bit funky. Okay, so we've got individual columns with different um, units is what they're trying to show off here. So we have got a 100 pixel column. And then a 3EM column. Ooh. Oh no, we don't have color commas here, it's just spaces. And then we've got a 40% column. Nice. Grid also introduces a new, a new unit, which is the fractional FR. FR unit allocates one share of the space available. For example, if two elements are set to one FR and three FR, you get four equal shares, first a quarter and second three quarters. Here the weeds make up the, the left sixth percent of the row and the carrots are remaining fifth. Oh, five, six. Um, so we want our grid, template, columns, to be one FR and five FR. Nice. So grid guard, when columns are set with pixels, percentages or EMs, any other columns set with FR will divvy up the space that's left over. Okay. Uh, here, Carrots form a 50 pixel column on the left and the weeds are a 50 pixel column in the right. Um, create these two columns and use FR to make three more columns that take up the remaining space in between. So we want grid, template, columns, uh, with a 50 pixel, then three FR. So we can do a repeat. Uh, three FR and then 50 pixels. Why is it not liking that? Can I just do FR, FR, FR? Template columns. I'm sure that's how you do it. 50 pixels, right? If I did like 3 FR and then 50 pixels, why is it complaining about the... Uh, Do I have to say one FR? Wow, do you have to specify? Okay. 
So you have to give it um, units for, I suppose that's the same, I can't just write pixel. I don't know why we're getting uh, an underscore on 50 pixels though. And why couldn't we just do repeats? Oh, because I just did one FR, I just did FR, didn't I? Uh, three, one FR, was it that way around? Yeah, it was. Cool, so we've got 50 pixel column and then three lots of uh, even spaced for the remaining and then a final 50 pixel column at the end. Okay, now there is a 75 pixel column of weeds on the left hand side of your garden. Then three fifths of, three fifths of the remaining space is growing carrots while two fifths are overrun with weeds. So we want a grid. Uh, template columns with a 75 pixel first column and then uh, three and two nice and easy okay grid template rows towards the all but the top 50 pixels of your garden. Note the water is set to only f uh, to fill only your fifth row. Okay, right. So I need to make five rows in the top 50 pixels of the garden. So there's lots of different ways we could do this. Um, we could start with a repeat, oh, repeat of uh, five lots of 10 pixels. I think we need a comma. Uh, and then an FR to take the remaining space. One FR. Oh no, wait, we want four rows at the top. Because this isn't, we're not repeating how many lines we're drawing. We're repeating how many uh, spans we're making. So that would be five spans of 10. So the fifth row in this case is within that group. So that's why four is correct there. That should be right. Oh no, that's not going to be enough now. Because this needs to be like 12 and a half pixels. That would work. So four lots of 12 and a half pixels, and then the fifth row is the one that gets watered. What other ways could we do this? Um, I guess that's the best way to do it because we're, we're doing it based on pixels. Yeah, this, this looks good. On to the next. Two levels left, right. Grid template is shorthand that combines template rows and template columns. For example, 50, 50, 200. We'll create a grid with two rows that are 50 each and one column that is 200. Try using grid template to water an area that includes the top 60% and left 200 pixels of your garden. So grid template. Um, we only want one section. Okay, so we can just do 60% slash 200 pixels, right? Nice. Yeah, grid's definitely way more powerful than I considered it to be, if it's, if it's like this. <laughs> okay, Garden is looking great. He had, here you've left a 50 pixel path at the bottom of your garden and filled the rest with carrots. Unfortunately, the left 20% of your carrots have been overrun with weeds. Right, so... We want to... I assume we've only got one patch of poison and one patch of water. 
So we're only going to be looking at grid template here. Because we've only got uh, template. Right. Um, because like we can't enter, we can't add new lines here. So we want, and I assume this is uh, our poison. I think is going to be grid start uh, row and column one. And the water is column two, row one. So we want, in terms of our rows, we want the first row to be all but the last 50 pixels. So we can do that with one FR and then 50 pixels and then a slash. So that should say uh, we want one row of 50 pixels at the end and then one row that takes up the remaining space. And then in terms of the columns, we want the first column to be 20% and then the last column to be the remaining 80%. Or, or we could do one FR. And that's it. Lovely. Nice. So yeah, there are some other games here as well that we could try out. Um, but yeah, that's, I think that's given us a much better understanding of grid, how that works. Uh, and now the challenge is to try and apply that to <laughs> the rest of our designs. So if we go back to our mobile view of our site and we think about how we want this to operate in our nav bar here, let's have a little think. So if we put our code over to the side here, Have a look again so let's let's shrink this down a little bit more so we can see everything so with our closed nav how we're currently doing it we don't we don't necessarily need this second text gun for the moment let's uh, take that off So this, this all works at the moment because we're just putting all of the um, SVG elements within one SVG within the button. So it's really this one where we're open. This is what we care about. So what we could do is set this UL up as a grid. So let's see if we can apply that. So if we use grid, and rather than flex flow, we're going to say it's grid template. And our rows, we want uh, one, two, three, four, five rows. But at the moment, we're going to just repeat uh, five, one FR. And then in our columns, we just want one column. So we're just going to do one FR. Right? So if we save that, we have our row there. Oh yeah, we didn't go into how things get aligned at all, did we? Like align self equivalent. Do we have that for items? Properties of the children. So 
where they start, where they finish. Ah, so we want Justify Self. We didn't get into that with the uh, Grid Garden game there. Ah, okay, so wait. Uh, justify Self. Aligns a grid item inside a cell along the row. And then Align Self is along the column. So in our mobile app here, we would want our close icon here to justify self. But it's not going to be flex end, is it? It's, uh, wait, let's, let's uh, expand this a bit. Uh, What would the oh it's just start end that's much easier so we want end for this situation and that should move our x across to the right that's good so now rather than having these as position relative and absolute i think we want contact that's all within the a tag isn't it let's uh bring these onto the same line make it a bit easier to read Let's have a little think about how we want this. We want this cell to contain both this SVG and the contact. So really it might be better Do we make our contact class also a grid? Do we even need an LI here? What if we take this out? See what it see what it does. I think that's correct for what we want. then our contact we want to justify self stretch which should I think if we go back to here should try and stretch it across the width of the column Oh, that's the default anyway. Right, okay. Which it doesn't seem to be doing though. So if we inspect this. Yeah, so if we look at our grid here. And actually we can have a little helper here. So we've got five items. This last item, it is being stretched across, that's fine. Mm. 
Yeah, so the actual button, so the actual anchor tag is the whole way across. Actually, that's probably be a button, shouldn't it? Because we're not navigating to another screen, we're just scrolling down. Down to the contact section. I wonder, can I just have this as auto? No, it doesn't like auto. What size did we go with in our design? Oh wait, this doesn't work, does it? We want a width of 150 and a height of 60 to match the nav bar. So, Let's specify that in our grid. So these are 60 pixel. And our width is, what do we say, 150 pixels. Just for the moment. We'll, we'll change those to more reactive uh, elements at a later point. 148, yeah. Looks quite wide there, but... Is that what we were using? I suppose that's similar, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's fair. Right, then rather than text line center here. We probably want a... We want to have the text in the middle of the button, right? Actually, we might just be able to do with the um... oh, margin auto. That helps if I get it. What do we do, padding auto. Thing is, we want the text in the middle of this. Oh, it's in an A ref anyway. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so we go back to our display flex. We want to justify our center. Justify content. Center. And align items center. Ooh. There we go, nice and centered in our in each of our boxes. So obviously we need to change the font and the font color, etc. But that's alright for the moment. I don't know if we need the padding anymore. I shouldn't be doing anything. Nope. Put that out. Is this doing anything anymore? Doesn't look like it. Right, 
Right, so it's just our close button here that we need to figure out. So it's these height and width properties. Which we could overwrite with um, the little hexagon component that uh, Yantk put together for us yesterday. Or whenever it was, Wednesday. I kind of want to see what's the way we're meant to be doing this. If we didn't do this as a set width here, but if we did this as 100% instead, so it should be 100% of its container. Is it not like that? I think it doesn't mind 100%. In which case, this is now 100% rather than 90. This is now 50%. This is 60 out of 90, so 66%. And 40, was it 40? Which is going to be what? Um... We're just under 50%, so let's do like 45% there. I don't know if I can do percentages here, so we're going to see if this works. No, it doesn't like that. So, let's have a little look at uh, SVGs again. Polygon. Ah, it looks like some people have done some polygon generators. Uh, units. Percentage. Let's see if. Uh, see if there's any options around this. That's it. Right, that's what we want to do. So we do a view box on our SVG. So here, and actually we, we originally had, uh, let's, let's undo all those changes we just did. So our original view box is from zero. Now, is this an X or Y coordinate? I'm going to assume it's an X coordinate. In which case I want it to be 90 and 60. Because it was a wider box across. So this height should be 100% now. I think when we look at our our tab here, because the grid is now giving it a the dimensions of sixty by one fifty, then adding that view box, I think, should tell it to use all the height and width available to it. And to draw this he uh, hexagon based on an original thing like that, 
which I might have got the wrong way around. It might be 90 then 60 then. Oh, sorry, 60 then 90. Go on. No, it's almost. It feels close. Right, why is that wrong? Is it because we're currently looking at a 150 box? Oh, that's too much. close oh wait maybe this is uh maybe this needs to be 100 by 100 hmm all right let, let's let's look in more detail <laughs> Using a view box and a container element. If you give the view box the size of 0, 0, 100, 100, then the points can be written like percentages and the shape will scale with the FVG, SVG. Let's have another look at this in a second. So that, that's not something we we're going to want to use. So this is saying based on these points. So if it was 100 by 100 as a square, we'd want this to be 100. Wherever we've got 90, we're now looking at 100. Wherever we've got 45, that's now 50. 60 is instead 66, right? 40 out of 90, what's that? What's four ninths? I can probably just do uh, a 44%-ish. What does that look like? <laughs> Slightly bigger box. <laughs> Why? The SVG is correct, so that's the right sizing. I don't know why this is shrinking it down though. Should be a bigger box. How do oh. Let's see how view box works. Because I think that's what we're not understanding properly. And probably this preserve aspect ratio. This might be useful. And this might be useful. Let's have a look at some of these. So, view box. The view box attribute. Uh, defines the position and dimension in user space of an SVG viewport. Min X, min Y, width and height. These numbers are special, uh, separated by white space or a comma. Specify the rectangle in user space which is mapped to the bounds of the viewport. Okay. So 
So min x, min y, and then width and then height. So based on that, I would assume that when we wanted this, uh, what size do we have it here? So this is a 148 by 60. So yeah, 148 by 60. So I think that view box will be correct. And now the points will need to be corrected again. So this is going to be the max width, 148. Where have we got 100? It's 148. Where have we got 50? We want 74. Oh, other way around. Uh, 66 was 60% 60 of the height, which was 40, which is now 60. So this is 40. <laughs> And 44 was 40 compared to 60 divided by divided by 3 times by 2 uh, 3 into 40 is almost 12 so 24 Was close, but we want our we want our heights max, don't we? So this actually should be sixty. This should be like forty, and this should be like forty. That's looking almost right. Why is it slightly weird though? Oh, it's because the the rest of the span is not one four eight. So let's just change this to 150. No, it didn't like that at all though. Oh, because these, these need to be 150 now. 150 and 75. Okay. Almost there, I think. We just need to put this span in the correct point. So if we do contact span to target our contact text here, and we just do actually we can just do display. If we do display grid and make it a grid template. One FR by one FR. That means a one box in the grid. No, we don't, that's not that's not working, is it? Because we're shrinking the size of this. Let's get rid of these that we're not using. We are getting close though. So our span, how do we want to do this? We want to center the span within the SVG. Can we do that? If we gave it a higher z-index, can it just sit on top, or does it not work like that?
Hmm, not sure that's going to be the case. So at the moment we've got this anchor tag that covers the whole of the grid of the UL element. If we did the same stuff here, we just did both of these like this. It's kind of right. Position absolute on this. Mm, not really, no. You weren't changing my mind about these. <laughs> Could we line self like center on this as long as we give this a Display. What if we just did like a display flex on this? No, because then they have to align next to each other, don't they? Is there a simple way? It's probably something simple here. Place text inside SVG. Oh, <laughs> we can just place it. the text element that might be the easiest way to do this uh, where's our site this one so rather than having this separate let's get rid of this let's for the moment get rid of that and then here within this we're going to say text uh, and it looks like we need xy coordinates didn't we So X, um, so based on this, we probably want X around about, oh, how do we center it? You can put links in them. Can we send a text? Because we don't want to just put the X value as being the, the center of the SVG, because then, like, depending on the length of the text, and the size of the font inside is going to change where it appears. Yeah, I don't think we want to do this. Place text over SVG. Just gonna open loads and loads of tutorials. <laughs> you have to use positioning. 
Yeah, I kind of... Guess we're doing with a hundred. Yeah, that might work. Or we have a little look at this. So in the back we got the bunch of bananas. Middle you got the header and the tagline. And then on the front is Eddie with his loose banana, right? because we're doing we're working with very simple SVG elements Text elements as you need for your panel needs two. Only content inside SVG text elements is rendered by browsers. So I wonder if we can use um, I wonder if we can use CSS uh, properties within that text element better. Let's try it. No harm in trying. Right, so in here. What would we do like X? 50%. Uh, and same with Y. say contact and if we get rid of this span here and then uh, if we target our text element Let's just do color red first. Let's see if it's targeting properly. Doesn't look like it. Even though it is testing the color red here. That is not red text though. Like font size. Steve, like 4 EM. Oh, it is, it is targeting it. So why is the, the color didn't work? What do we do like text align center? That doesn't appear to have worked. Can 
when we do X auto. Doesn't like that. Will we get rid of the X element entirely? center this in the SVG surely it's going to depend on the width like how it's going to depend on how many characters in our content let's do another search oh. Right, center text in SVG. Easy solution to te center text horizontally. Ah, oh, text anchor. Right. Should have just searched up before so can we do it as a property here it looks like it uh wait we still need our x 50 percent. oh we have got it there no that doesn't seem to have taken then so if we do text anchor here Center. Mm, that doesn't seem to have worked. What were we missing? Set the position of the text to the absolute center of the element. So if it's the parent, you just do 50 50, which we've done. Rendered characters are aligned such the geometric middle of the resulting rendered text is at the initial current text position. We've already got centered vertically, that's fine. Oh, it's middle, not center, that's why. I was like, I'm sure, sure I'm doing what they're doing. Middle. Oh, so maybe this did work. Let's do middle there. And take it off of this. Yeah, nice. Okay. And now, is this all still taking it from here? So if we did all of this... So where, where have we got text in this? We've got text in allies, we've got text in anchors. And what uh what are our text properties here? 24 bold. So, let's do pix to em. And we want to go from 24 pixels. Oh, oh sorry. Default of 16. Converting 24. 1.5, isn't it? Yep. So, our li... We want a font size. Actually, let's do this separately. Because we want both LI and A. Uh, and let's do it at the top here. So it's clear that this is for fonts, LI and A. Font size. 
uh, 1.5 rem and font weight we want as bold go on please work that's looking all right it's looking fairly similar still not quite the same though is it what are they using for bold here Where do you see the output? I'm sure there's a way in... There's a way somewhere in Figma to see... CSS, isn't there? Well, there used to be at least. Is it in the dev mode now? Yeah, it is. 24, form weight 700. Let's try that instead. It's 700 bolder. Oh, not that one. Let's see, we say that. No, that's the same. Why does it look bolder in the uh, in Figma? It's probably the um, probably the view, the device view that we're looking at here is smaller than what we're looking at. Uh, Four eighty. Oh. Let's get rid of this. Four eighty. Is it the fill? Nothing unusual in the properties here. Maybe it's just the color fill that's making this look odd. Uh, color. Definitely looks bolder here. Twenty four pixels, Montserrat, bold. Nothing else has changed. There's no stroke on it. So, why does this font look so much thicker? Can we achieve the same look? Maybe we'll, we've got to go bolder than bold. What's 900 look like? Ah, wait, this is not doing anything, is it? Uh, the normal? No, it is making it bold. I'm confused about that. What does boulder look like? Nah, that's not doing anything either. Hmm. What is causing this? I mean, it's looking all right. It's Fixing the mobile view there, that, that I think is looking okay is it, in terms of a uh, hamburger menu. A bit confused as why why is uh, not taking the, the same styling. 
Now, if we zoom out so it's roughly the same size, let's let's see. Uh, we'll get rid of. Get rid of this. Have it lined up. It's almost exactly the same. We'll zoom in one more. It's way thinner, isn't it? So is the font, have I got a different font um, file? Maybe the Montserrat I've got here. Maybe the one I've downloaded doesn't have the same bold um, library. Maybe we're looking at like a, a semi-bold or even like a medium. What does it look like? See, that looks more similar. We have this side by side. Let's have a little look. Yeah, I think this is looking like medium. Should we go into dev mode? 500. And we go to bold. It should be 700. But that's not what we're getting, is it? See what it's computed at. Font weight 900. That is definitely the same font as well, isn't it? Ah, wait, 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 wait. Montserrat thin. Why is it Montserrat thin? That's an issue. That's why it's not working. Is it doing that everywhere? Is this one right thin as well? Oh wait, let's uh, close the menu. We look at this. Yeah, okay. So we've got one right thin for some reason. We look at our fonts. I think this is downloaded where we've downloaded this before we've downloaded it as Montserrat Thin so that's what our issue is so let's try and get uh, Montserrat what format let's have a look Firstly, let's double check. Licenses, open format, that's fine. If we download family here, what versions do we get? And if not, then do we just get it from here? I think these are the ones we want. Yep, yeah, sure. So let's download this. Let's download the WAF file and then we'll drag that into our project and hopefully we'll just update the fonts. So downloads. Called them, we just call them Montserrat. We 
the lowercase m. Let's make sure they're the same. So I'm just uh, renaming the files in my downloads folder. I just got that off the screen. two files we're going to drag into here replace replace right and then does that update automatically let's uh, close our server and restart it second right now when we refresh or it's refreshing on its own how's our menu looking mm, looks pretty similar to me Like this should be 700. And that should look like this. I'm confused why this is happening though. What's causing this? I mean, I guess we can overwrite it by just downloading a different version of the font, right? So we go back to here and we get like a bold version. Do we just download this as our bold version? What do we get when we download it from here? Let me just see. Did we get uh, WAF files? No, we just get TTF files. That's no good. So let's let's say that we got the regular from here. to rescue what's in Montserrat and set it free under a free open source license. So this should be version, yeah, version 7.2. take bold and we want to take uh, the WAF and the WAF 2 versions did that download I think it did yeah looks like it did okay 
So now in our file format here, we're going to add our bold versions. And actually, let's call these. Let's get these lowercase to match the other types. And then in here, now how do we do font face for different boldness types? Something like this, weight 400, 700. Uh, font family. Uh, bold, regular. How to add multiple font files to the same font. Let's try these. Need to start closing some of these. Um, okay. Bold attack style must come last. A single font style. This has changed. Um, so what we just add bold directly below it by the looks of it. So here where we've got our font face. I'm going to do an exact copy. Like this. But then this needs to be bold. Do we just call it bold? Yep. Right, come on. Please be the solution. Can we save this? These are looking better. That to me looks better. That looks like it's matching now. Now we inspect this. It's still saying it's rendered with Montserrat. Let's go to our text contact. But it looks like it's, it's picked up the bold font now. That's good. I think all of the, this whole contact thing needs to be a bit taller, doesn't it? If we if we shifted this down, actually, let's let's use this to measure. All right, let's uh, take it to the top here, and then extend it down. What height are we looking at for our hexagon? Something like that, 150. Let's undo all of that. I mean, really, actually, probably be easier to do it like this, like it there, stretch it down. 76, 77. Just looking at the the height of the box here. So if we go back to this, we go back to our nav. We want a height of seventy seven instead. Let 
which actually this grid template we want a four and then a 77 pixel. So wait, if I set this as 60, is that just going to stretch it? No, okay. If I do that 77. Okay, so I quite like how this looks. So what we can do is figure out where the hexagon stops here. So it looks like oh, I can change the size of it. Now I don't want to rotate it. I want to change the size. Yeah, there we go. Looks like 39 or 40. Let's go with 40. Which we are doing. So it's just this rather than 60. This should be 77. That looks nicer. There we go. So now the only difference is we've got a bit of a drop shadow on these three items here, which we should be able to do quite easily. So we're saying our three LIs, and they're the only LIs in here, they have a bit of a drop shadow, which is done. How do we do that again? Box shadow. That's not worked. Why has that not worked? I just realized this is the uh, <laughs> Sonic. Uh, Adventure T battle music. <laughs> they brief her first. What's it called? Escape from the city, that's it. with these box shadow values then. Oh, it's got some help. So why is this not doing a box shadow over the top? Is this too light a colour? Let's make it really dark so we can see it. So it looks like it's operating below. Like if we got rid of these other ones. Yeah, you can quite clearly see the box shadow underneath. So I guess because there's another element directly next to it. So can we do Z indexes across them? So uh, we don't need this. Yeah, let's close our font stuff. We've got that sorted now. Don't need monster right anymore. We don't need the Google fonts. We don't need that look up. We don't need to see how to do the SVG texts. 
What do we end up using? Actually, probably a good idea to keep uh, keep these open so I can put the links in the YouTube video description in case anyone else gets stuck on the same thing. Same resources to use to look up look um look up all the uh, information. Right, um, box shadow uh, on siblings. Not uh, on, uh, overlay. Let's let's go with something like that. Uh, let's see. I have a box shadow on a div that I want to stick out like a bar over the next div on the page. Yeah, I think Z index would work. Okay. So let's say. Have a look at this. If we say on our allies we have uh, position relative, that hopefully doesn't affect any of the others. Yeah. And then. We want Z indexes based on order, which I know that we can do. Uh, CSS um, change property uh, using index. There's a way there's a way to do this. I've definitely seen this before where you can change you can set your CSS style to take into account how many child elements like how many sibling elements it has. Um set property value based on index yes I think it's this no there's there's a I think there's a more modern way of doing this now I'm sure there is. Or perhaps I'm thinking of uh, Svelte. Svelte stuff. CSS property maybe yeah if we do something like this So within our allies here, no, 
No, okay, let's let's default back to the uh the standard way of doing it. The nth child one. Yeah, we can do this. This should work. So li here. Um, so we do li. No, ul. Nth child. We want two. Two, three, and four. Let's do four. So we do three and four. That's actually, actually, let's do two, three, and four. Is that going to work? No, we've targeted the wrong thing. So is that not targeting the the second child element of the UL? Should be this, right? Uh, let's let's make this simple again. No point complicating things for the moment. We'll figure out better ways to do it later on. So we say uh, class equals, uh, let's just call this home. And then we'll add the other two here. I mean, even we could do style Z index directly here. But solutions and story. And then here we do home. Is this not going to work because we need position on it as well? That might be why it wasn't working before. It probably was correct. Oh no, no, this should work. So solutions and story. We just need to make sure they stack on top of each other. So three and four. No. Oh, I'm doing it the wrong order. I need the story to be the lowest. Oh, of course I do, yeah. I want them um, to go up in the grouping. So is that, is that now the same? It's a slight difference. What's the difference when it's active? It's still got the hover on it. So we got rid of the mobile view so we can see the hover effect. Kind of there. Um, right, I think I want to do a little break with that. I think we're doing okay. Making some decent progress with that um, little nav bar. Uh, 
yeah, I could... could set up something like a... a words or something. Let's see, how do I set this up again? I think I've got something... Where, where is it? Games on stream. Is this going to load? I might need to reset it. Just give me a couple of seconds. It all depends if uh, anyone in chat wants to play it, but it's better to have something on. Uh, be right back. Back soon. Uh, keep that on. That's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm going to do a quick break. Grab some water. Have a little stretch, take a little screen break. Um, for anyone who's sticking around, uh, I'm going to start Game of Words. Um, I need to change my timer on that. Let's do like a five minute timer on that. And if you don't know how to play words, basically, hopefully, that should be coming through. Uh, Oh god, what? Is it on level 14 at the moment? <laughs> no, this is level 1. Okay. So, it's just Scrabble. Uh, find find the words in the uh, in the letters there. And if you just type in chat like that, hopefully it should pick it up. Let's check if it's all connected up. Maybe it's not all connected together. I haven't done this for a while, so <laughs> I think it might be broken. Let's just double check. Did that work? That sounded like it worked. Oh, there's no E. That's why file didn't work. Um, right, so that should just loop through. Uh, let me just check it. Auto pilots. And we'll probably just turn the volume down a little bit on it so it's not too loud. Uh, just in case anyone in wants something to do while I'm gone. Right, uh, let me reset my timer and I'll be back in a few minutes.
Right. It's not on uh no one fancy words, that's fine. Let's uh jump back into the dev though. I feel like I might want to change up some of the music. Maybe some synth wave. Let's see what the stream beats is like. Pop some of that on. Right, what are we going to do next? Let's do a little tidy up. Let's make sure everything's actually performing a function. So, is this doing anything? Is this getting, this should be getting rid of the underline. Yeah, so we need that there. Close, justify, self end. Why would we need that? Oh, that's the close button at the top. That's moving it across the right hand side. That's fine. That could probably do with a little bit of padding though. Uh, just to move this X a bit more central. I'm sure a little bit of uh Padding around it wouldn't be too bad. Mm. Maybe not top and bottom, maybe some like third side. No, I think it looks better with nothing on it. That looks fine. Okay, anything else not doing anything? Button height and width, that's fine. That's fine, that's okay. These are all fine. Yeah, there's probably a neater way to do that, um, which we can look into. I think maybe the next step, uh, we're gonna look to um, put all this into a component instead. So the way that we've done this SVG here should mean that even our grid, we set this to a bigger size, it would adapt, I hope. So let's say we set this to like 150 by uh, 300. Yeah, okay. Now why? Is this font? Ah, this font is based on the view box. So it's not gonna scale the same. Hmm, that, that could be an issue. Could be, but we're not gonna worry too much about it. <laughs> 
Right, do we want to whisk this away into... One thing we can do, we can definitely set this to fill like this, right? That's okay. I'm just wondering if we want to try and sort this all separately. And the other thing we want to see is... Um, doing something like... Uh, not fade, not fly. What do we want to do? We want some transitions. Let's go and have a look back at the docks. Uh, advanced felt. Transitions. So let's get these two. And let's see what these look like. So if we bring these in. Oh, we don't want... Uh, we just want standard transitions, don't we? Do a fly. Oh, <laughs> got words are still running. Let's close that. Okay. Um, where would we use send receive normally? Let's. Uh, Still want the send receive. Which isn't there. Isn't there. Here. That's not what we want. Is it this? I mean, this, this is probably close to what we want. Let's do the slide transition. Let's do that. I do still want to see this, but ignoring the transition bit. We did animate flip. Here. 
what I'm trying to look for here, uh, just to explain what I'm thinking, is this polygon here and this polygon here are probably pretty similar in terms of um, their looks. I'm wondering if we can do like a fade between them. But I also think the slide is probably enough. Um, Which we're doing here, is it? No. These ones. So if I just put a transition slide on... It's on each item, isn't it? Is it div? each item we do this so it's internal so I think if we add transition slide into here let's see what that does Button closes here, and then this button I see does it does it allow us to do that? It's not complaining. Doesn't it doesn't look like it's working properly. <laughs> we got rid of this one. No, not that one. Uh this one here. So on the close menu it's not there. No, it doesn't like. <laughs> I think we're looking at more custom animations than that. Let's undo all of that. And actually, yeah, do the thing that I should have been doing from the start is where we got to this nice complete solution. We're gonna uh, stop the server and we're gonna do a commit. So we need to do that. So get add all get commit uh, nav or I guess it's hamburger menu styling uh, bold font added what else have we done? I think that's it for the moment for this commit. Cool. Um, do we want to continue though? That's the question. I mean, I've now got a query as to why that's off the edge of it though. run the server again let's just check that's not an issue on this end it's correct when it's open that the uh, pitch goes full width when it's closed why is that not correct Oh, because the width is different, right? So 
So really, we want to update this to be the same. So that's our hexagon. Which is these. So we want to do something similar here. So where are view box? Here is 150, 77, 150 being the width. This one is 90, 60. And that should all be the same. And then these should now be 100%. That's kind of right. The only difference now is that our button shouldn't be fixed like this. How have we got it set? Ninety by sixty. This one's sixty by sixty, basically. So this button width here should be ninety. That's better. Cool. Okay, let's uh, let's add that as well. Get add. Uh, Git commit message um correct corrected width and view box Oops. properties on hamburger closed button. Cool. Um, I think I might actually wrap up there. Uh, fairly happy with the state of that now. We've got the same effects as what we see on our uh, Figma, on our design files and uh, the nav bar that we designed earlier. But I can definitely feel my uh, focus flagging a little bit. So rather than plodding on and uh, making more errors, I'm just going to wrap up there. Uh, thank you everyone who's come and chilled out and lurked and chatted today. I hope it's been interesting. Um, going to try and do another stream tomorrow. Don't know what bit we're going to tackle tomorrow though. <laughs> Uh, maybe we'll look at one of these other sections. Um, we've probably got to look at uh, these icons, these little SVG icons that we've done for each of these um, benefit sections. So these are all just uh, individual SVGs all um, placed together to form the overall one. And I think I'll probably be able to just export that, uh, hopefully. If I take that image, can I export this as an SVG? Let's see what that comes out as. Uh, where has that gone? Has it put it in here already? No. Let's have a quick look where that went. Um, websites, project files. Ha. Huh. Is that? 
going to be correct. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe, maybe that's right. Maybe that's not. <laughs> we'll have to have a look at that tomorrow. Um, yeah, we'll wait and see. But yeah, hope it's been an interesting stream. Uh, cheers for hanging out with me. Uh, let's see, is there anyone who else streaming? Could send people on somewhere. No, no nothing at the moment. I'll just wrap up there. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Stretching. Uh, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow, probably mid afternoon ish. Um, like three o'clock uh, GMT, something like that. Um, and yeah, we're going to continue on with the development of the site. Cool. Uh, Cheers, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.